OK, so um, all right. So last session, um, we uh, are just going to do I'll do a recap in a few seconds of uh, of the things which are coming in 2024. Uh, obviously, just want to thank everybody for turning up today. Just been a really fun event. Um, I'm going to do another little demo of the tendril or Steve, um, depending on what you prefer uh, in a few minutes. And, and, and obviously, if there's anything else you want us to quickly show, we'll gladly do it. Um, the reason I'm going to show that is we just added something else to it. So uh, uh, Sean uh, just had a play with the scene and, and we we managed to get uh, a wind effect happening very quickly. I mean, obviously, it's a bit unrefined, but we just thought we'd show that as well. Uh, and also the basics of it working again. And I know a few of you came late and missed the demo. So um, if we can... Uh, uh, show that a uh, little bit of that again. I think it's probably worth having a look at. So um, should I start with the update, guys? Are you all good? The recap. Okay. Um, so basically, um, we're obviously announcing the, the, the launch of 2024 uh, today, obviously celebrating one year. And, um, and by the way, can I say, uh, so many of you are already updated. This, when we did that last year, and everybody uh, started purchasing uh, the update to Lightwave, we the system crashed. So, um, thankfully, this time around it hasn't. So, uh, um, just uh, saying thank you for all those people who've already updated. Brilliant. Really glad uh, uh, you like what we've seen today and and uh, what we've shown today. So, we're we're announcing obviously 2024. That's um, going to be launched in the summer uh this summer so that actually gets 2024 to actually be more poignant to the year as opposed to us releasing at the end of the year uh 2023 so um we'll be doing that uh i don't know exactly when but it will be in the summer and we'll have that out and obviously all the things we've shown plus some other things we haven't yet shown uh will be included within that so um just really for those who are on this session and haven't really been around for the previous sessions. So just a quick run through of what we're um, adding. We're adding um, so a weight brush system, which Juice uh, demoed earlier on. It is on some of the earlier videos you can go back and have a look at. Uh, I mean, if any of you want to see that again, I'm sure Juice will gladly show a, a few little bits with weight map uh, or the weight brush system um, again. Um, but that weight brush system is is fantastic and and usable not just for for rigging but useful for for multiple things anywhere where you use a, a weight brush it's actually really useful at all so uh, and very comprehensive so we've got that um, tendril uh, which is uh, steve by any other name um, uh, we're also going to be launching so uh, uh, we've done a demo of that just just now i think juice did one and i've done one uh, showing some of the functionality of tendril um, but it's an amazing tool so so we, there's that um, we've got thicken and lathe uh, geonodes. Uh, uh, we've demoed that as well. They were fantastic. I have to say that the combination of thicken and the lathe combined uh, is just fantastically powerful. So um, uh, again, if we need to show that, we can. We've got photon shading uh, and fog shading in uh, Octane. We've shown both of those things today. Uh, again, I think that was fairly cool, how fast they are, how easy they are to use. Uh, so we've got that and we, we, we're obviously including that on the next update. Um, we've updated Unreal to 5.4 in uh, 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 the next Unre Unreal Bridge. So that's uh, um, again going to be included. So you know makes it pretty up to date. Um, there's an open VDB update we've done. So to bring that right up to date, um, obviously that that is one of those things where you won't really see the benefits of that straight away. But as we add more things uh, over the coming months, hopefully we'll start to see more uh, benefits of that system. But that's that's been uh, updated fully as well. Uh, we're adding Python 2 um, for the Mac so that that then means all the Python stuff we've already got in in Lightweight for the PC will then be able to work in the Mac, which is great. Um, Python 2 isn't supposed to be uh, <laughs> Ben's on the booze already. Just saying. Um, so, um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, in France, eh? Yep. It's like we drink Coca Cola and water; they drink wine. So we've um, we've got uh, uh, Python. 
So yeah. oh, great. Well, I suppose it is. Um, so um, we've got that in there. We've got an edge shader, which um, Elmar isn't in the session, but uh, um, the edge shader shader is fantastic. Um, and so uh, that's uh, uh, going to be in the next build. We've got all the new Octane lights we're, we're adding right now. So you're going to have those. They enable you to do volumetric streaming lights and those sort of things, but, but mega, mega fast. Um, they're going to be in there. Um, we've got a turbulence update, so a bit of output, the turbulence stuff in OpenVDB. Uh, Chronosculpt is being worked on. We think that will be in the summer, but it may end up being a little later, but that's being worked on now as well. Uh, we showed an Alembic um, uh, importer update, and as Ben uh, rightly pointed out, that, that allows you to put in uh, animatable particle data. So why that's important is if you want to get that stuff out for fluids from Houdini or clouds from Houdini into Lightwave, uh, it will do that uh, perfectly. And I think we've got a video back somewhere on the chat of a water ball we've dropped. Um, and again, that's using um, the photon shader in Octane. That was literally put together this morning and rendered this morning. And, and we, we showed that uh, this afternoon. So uh, Pretty, I'm just really trying to prove to you it's all alpha uh, uh, code we're showing, but that's a, a, another really cool feature. Um, so that's in there. Um, oh, and then the Lewis tools are in there. So point slide and edge slide we're working on right now. So they'll be there. Uh, the displacement brush we haven't finished yet, but it is already being worked on. That's part of the whole new brush system we're uh, adding. So obviously the weight brush is the first bit. Displacement brush <laughs> is the next bit. And... The next one is coming, um, but uh, but basically the displacement brush will be here by the summer, so that's going to be really good. Um, we've also got a fantastic tool that we've used for for this demo and for numerous bits today, which is a uh, uh, kit. Sorry, blah 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 blah. Right, so the kit service translate surface translations tool, which <laughs> Sean did. I think I'm covering it maybe a little bit too fast. But anyway, um, that basically allows you to, if you're using Kitbash, which I know a lot of people do, Max Trees, Mega Scans, uh, Textures.com, those sort of things, it will translate that completely into Lightwave. Um, uh, and it is fantastic. So if you've got big complex scenes with loads and loads of surfaces from Kitbash or whatever, it will just... You can literally point at the directory, point where you want that to go, and it will just basically translate that across. Um, so you don't have to do it in all the rotations and all the uh, surface translations. It does that for you automatically. And by the way, when it does it, it also sets it up for Octane, Lightwave, uh, and uh, uh, for Unreal as well at the same time. So um, that tool is fantastic, and that's in, in obviously, um, Lightwave 2024. Um, we've also done a corporate sponsorship deal with Polyhaven. I think we've shown a few things today from Polyhaven. In fact, the, the well we showed you earlier on is from Polyhaven. And um, so that basically is a start of a partnership. So they have, um, uh, you know, we can link to that and, and potentially uh, as we go forward this year or maybe early next year, we might be able to put uh, a direct link into Lightwave so that you'll be able to drag and drop Polyhaven stuff in and out of the scene as you wish um, uh, directly on the interface. So that's something that we're going to be working on. We also um, we also uh, have um, uh, literally dragged, and I have to say screaming, uh, screaming from his retirement uh, uh, position. Uh, we basically persuaded Steve Hurley uh, to um, uh, work with us and uh, uh, which is which he's doing and basically uh, that means that we're going to be putting in the advanced placement tools into Lightwave uh, we're going to be putting um, and if you've never used those by the way they are amazing so the advanced placement tools use a different um, uh, a different physics engine than bullet that's included inside Lightwave and the physics engine uh, it, this particular physics engine is particularly good for doing uh, things where you just need them to fall down and be rock solid. So it's an excellent tool for dropping things onto things, for um, 
you know, filling a bowl full of objects, or you could be using it for, you know, putting rocks on another rock so they fall naturally down that rock surface. Um, so the scene just, you know, litters correctly. Uh, um, it's a, again a fantastic tool. We're adding that in 2024, um, and also up, which was Steve was working on a, um, a like a flip fluid style. Um, a fluid simulator that's going to be in as well. That really works well. Um, and obviously, that's part of a longer term strategy with us. We'll, we'll, we're going to have bigger water things added as, as we can and give you the ability to, to have that all in Lightwave as standard. Again, not having to buy extra plugins, all built in there uh, as standard. And then Remesher, we're also including from Steve. And Remesher is amazing for if you're doing, you know, re you know, adjusting the mesh for face meshes, it gives you a, a kind of color mask where you can see um, how the shaping of all those points are going to react to the face with morph targets and those sort of things. It's unbelievably good. Uh, we're adding that in as well. So that's going to be included in Lightwave uh, 2024. I think, I think, oh, uh, and obviously Octane uh, Studio Edition, we've just completed that. Um, obviously, again, we're continuing and will always continue to run um, the Octane single seat edition or single GPU edition um, with Lightwave. But now we've completed the studio update. It means if you want to add more GPUs, that plugin is just going to be grabbable off the website uh, for 2024 and further and forward. And that basically was previously, I think, a 250 uh, 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 dollar or pounds, I can't quite remember, um, uh, uh, plug-in. Uh, obviously, we're going to be supplying that for free. So you'll be able to do multi-GPU rendering through Lightwave as well, if you wish. And the only thing you have to do is pay for the multi-GPU license from um, Otoy. Um, I cannot stress enough, if you're in production, it is a magnificent option to be able to add multiple GPUs um, just to speed up the Octane part of it. It's fantastic. So, uh, um, and I, I, although we weren't going to mention it today, but we kind of leaked it by mistake uh, earlier on. We're also, uh, it wasn't me this time, it was, El <laughs> it was Elmer. And uh, we've we're literally having him flogged at the moment. He's, he's bent over a barrel. We are flogging him as we speak. Um, but basically we, we're doing some major updates to the render engine in Lightwave. Uh, uh, as well for 2024. They're almost complete already. They're, they're ready to go into uh, beta very soon, but all of that is being done. It massively speeds up the anti-aliasing and also the output rendering quality. Um, uh, it, it's just way better. So uh, that's being done as well. So by the time 2024 comes out in the middle of the summer or sometime in the summer, we basically will have a really good, and I promised that, by the way, that we would start working on that when we were talking about 2023. But that means you're going to have Octane GPU render engine. You're going to have the super uh, power and accuracy of a very heavily updated Lightwave render engine. And of course, you're going to have the Unreal render engine um, you can utilize as well. And of course, we're going to be further developing the Unreal um, side of it. I, I, I'm not sure what else we're going to be doing. Um, for 24, but we will be adding more updates to that going forward as well. So I think I've covered all the updates. I'm running out of oxygen in the room. I might have to open the door in order to allow some in. Um, so I suppose now, um, I think I've covered everything, Giles. Uh, you is have that Chris. I think it's you next, Ben. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. But Benson has a question. Okay. What's the question? <laughs> And you can type it in if, if you'd like. Or can we find him to. Has to come off mute. Why don't you do the um, the quiz piece while he, he can type it in? Yeah, do, do the quiz and then, then we'll do the question. Alrighty, OK, so. Thank you for your responses to the quiz. I I am drinking red wine now to celebrate giving away these five licenses. And I, I've not drunk much, but this is my second bottle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you didn't get all the questions right. So 
what we have to do is give the five licenses to people who got the most questions right, mm. which is actually quite nice anyway, anyway. So um, the five, uh, now I want to go through the questions first. I, it's my quiz, it's me that made it. So I'd like to actually go through them and just tell you who yep. the, what the answers were. Can I, I've got time? It is, as long as you're quick, yeah, because we, we, this, this is a short meeting. Uh, okay. Uh, in which case, uh, maybe call out a couple of the specific ones yes. that you quite like. Yeah. Okay. Well, in the specific ones, uh, one specific one, there was um, a question: When was Lightwave launched? And we most people got it right. They put 1990, which is absolutely perfect. Uh, I think one or two people put 1994, which I would accept as an answer anyway, because. That was when Lightwave was launched standalone. 1990 was when Lightwave was launched on the video toaster. So anyone who said either of those, well done you. Um, for uh, the tricky one, who did Ben's wife play in Batman New Times? Uh, everybody got it right. I'm quite surprised and I'm really pleased that you've all watched the short or at least shared the information amongst yourselves, um, which is really good. Um, and... Uh, I think everybody just guessed at the voice and it was John Tyndall. And then the two questions that I thought would really pose a problem. One was given away by Juice this morning and one was given away by Andy this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> there wasn't much trick with either of those. Anyway, I have the five winners somewhere. Oh, here we go. OK, so and I'm Ben Vost. Ben Vost for number two. The five ben winners. Vost for number three. Yeah. No, the first winner picked out of the winners is uh, Sliver Dragon Ofra. Okay, I'm, I hope I've said that. So right. this is this is your email address. So it's, we're not giving the at address. wherever. It's just the email address, and then you will be emailed. Yeah. Uh, the second one is Stuart, uh, who comes from a very famous tea company. <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, the third one. Um, was an admin. That one downstairs. Who said that? Someone said something's downstairs. <laughs> so I'll be right, I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. It was it's <laughs> Diane Hartman. I will mute her. There we go. The, the third one was admin. Now that's a bit tricky, but it's at K A is the uh, first part of the email address. Yeah. Uh, the third, no, the fourth is Richard Feeney. Congratulations, Richard. And the last one, which we're quite pleased with because it's quite, um, you know, it's nice, uh, is called Lardbros. Well done, Tim. Yeah, well done, cool. Tim. So, so uh, we'll, e we'll email you and your accounts will be updated. You'll have the Lightwave 2024 when it obviously comes available. So well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. And and thanks so much for taking part. It was a fun quiz to, to make. And yeah. uh, I'm glad it, it tickled your pins. Yeah. And it was meant to be confusing and challenging. It wasn't meant to be easy. So don't worry if you struggled with it. It was meant to be a fun, challenging one with some random questions. Yeah. So well done. Yeah. Yes, way. That's it, Tim. <laughs> All yours. Um. Andy, do you want to do your demo? Should I do that very quickly? Yeah, go for it. Glass is on. OK, let me share my screen. So this is um, uh, the same as basically the same as we did in the first part of the demo. I don't think I want to risk the uh, the second part of the demo again. Um, so we have properties. So what we've what I've added here, this was Sean who basically uh, uh suggested this and we, we tried it out and it did basically work we put in um, a noise texture directly into the rotation and then we've um just given that a very basic piece of uh animation uh over time just to sort of um uh get that to to move actually it's lost that because obviously i i, I took off the painting so let me just let me do it again and then i'll basically put that back in Hopefully, hopefully that will work. So, um, so this is the um, uh, the, the node tree we added up uh, or put together the last few days. Um, so it, it's exactly the same as I, I did earlier on. We've got basically a ball. Uh, actually, for those who who missed it, 
we've got three sections here which we're playing with this top section here and actually it's this node whoops that node there it's that section's really de dealing with analyzing the shape underneath the ball or, or whatever the object is you're going to paint on this set of of nodes is really where the painting is happening and and it's drawing the spline and this section is the actual object that's being painted on that basically is the leaf or the whatever the case may be uh, that we're actually uh, putting on there okay so uh, let me just unattach that for a moment let's go back to that I've got the ball I've got the paint kind of ready to go so let's just do this again so this is a, a, I, I go a little bit slow mainly because I'm just doing this with a mouse but obviously with a, a, a you know I would think we can get this working with a Wacom tablet as well um, but I'm just going to paint on be fairly random whoops just a little bit more here. Got to be careful not to draw raw, uh, rude images, which I have done a few times. There we go. We, we can cross the over the. No ending, haven't you? <laughs> Sorry, bud. You've, you've drawn rude pictures purely by accident, though, haven't you? Not not on purpose. No, 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 no. I, no. I'm uh, absolutely would never. Uh, uh, yeah, never do. No. no. <laughs> so ba basically, this is. Um, so just to quickly show you what I've just drawn. Um, so that's just painted on uh, those parts there. And obviously, actually, just to quickly show you, it's not a fluke. Um, let me go back to the... God, I'm getting tired. Okay, let me just... Uh, right, where is that been mouse? It has been 10 hours, Andy, of, of live <laughs> event. So. Yeah, that, that's pretty good, huh? don't you think? So let's just... We, I'm just going to do a bit more painting to show you that it's... Uh, you know, flexible and, and workable. We can go over other bits here we painted earlier. It doesn't really matter. So let's uh, do that. Uh, get, uh, God, I really risk drawing something bad if I'm <laughs> not careful. <laughs> so, oh, let's not draw a penis. Okay, so, um, <laughs> right, so, so uh, we can go over objects as well. It doesn't matter. So let's go around up to here. Bang. So there's our there's our next bit. OK, so um, move that over to one side. So let's just put this on the VPR. So, so you can see we're painting there. We're able to swap that object out with anything else we've we've made. So if we've we've got a um, IV, we can have IV over it. We could make that into uh, this, this I, I, I know no one was expecting it earlier on, but we did an eyeball as well. <laughs> so uh, I think that's particularly tasteful, um, as you can see. Actually, while we're close in on this, let's just show you this uh, a second. So the other, the other thing we can do with this is um, on this spline geometry, obviously you can see that's pretty jagged, right? So we can actually up that and just slide that out and up the quantity there of um, subdivisions on that, uh, you know, to basically make that much smoother. And also the side. So instead of being three, I can actually make that nice and round if I want to. So now all of a sudden we start to get a much better, you know, um, uh, sort of set of curves and geometry. And so it will just look better when we're and, uh, Andy, closer. Are you, are you, in words of cage, man, are you measuring this or are you just eyeballing it? I'm just eyeballing it. With the eyeballs. With it's, it's a joke. <laughs> I I god damn. That was... He's tired. Leave him. Long day. Leave yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah. Be gentle with me. So it's uh yeah. So and, and as we mentioned earlier on, we can have these as MDDs, so they can be animated. Um, so you, you know, potentially you could have the eyes blinking and you know do do whatever you want to do. Okay, so um, let's take that back to the the flowers, uh, flowers. Okay, so what we've got here. So this is this is going to be something I won't be able to show obviously rendered, but I will just be able to show the core principle of it. We've got here uh, some noise. I'm just going to take that into the rotate rotation, and then basically on the ro on the position of that, I'm just going to basically. Put a little keyframe up here and then let's go 350 millimeters and then i'm going to preview it now the preview is going to take some time it isn't going to update instantly on the preview but just just you know bear with it it is going to be doing a, a an update sorry say again 
you can add a viewport which is smaller than the normal size and then you make it in that it's faster yeah well you know just right this is i've done i've, I've clicked go now ben but thank you yeah. And, and my apologies for, for not shrinking it down. I kind of, in retrospect, I will literally flagellate myself uh, with a... Um, a join uh, <laughs> Elmer on the barrel. Yeah, I will join Elmer on the barrel later yeah. on and have myself flogged. And uh, so I do hope this works, by the way. You know, to be fair, we've, we've got away with all the demos today have gone well, have they not? Yeah. So, uh, um, um, so, and so obviously... Sorry, Andy, just Jim, you got your question that we had eyeballs on before. This is now Ivy and the vines are all intersecting over the top of each other. So you can do that with the uh, with this tendrils piece. Cool. OK. There we go. Oh, sorry. Sorry, actually, I completely misread your question because I'm tired now. The question was, Andrew, are these eyeball buds safe from intersecting collisions? Um, well, the, well, you can space them so close that they will intersect, but obviously that's just to do with the spacing. So you can just drag out the spacing of those. And in fact, I'll go back and show that in a few minutes with the ivy leaves. It's probably the easiest to see, but I'll change the quantity of ivy leaves in a few minutes and show it to you. So can you see, basically, it's going to be very easy. Now, obviously, we've just quickly put this together and we only work this bit of it out probably about 40 minutes ago. So so it's uh, it, it means you could add a fractal pattern and effectively make it look like there's wind blowing through the leaves of it very quickly, very easily. Um, I think you can see that that basically working. All right. So that's that's that bit. So let's go back and do the next bit. You want to see uh, quantities, right? So um, let me go on to here. I'm going to change that back to the ivy leaf, cause, mainly because it's just simpler to see because there's less of them there. OK, so there's the um, ivy leaves. And um, God, I can't remember where I, where I adjust the quantity of those up there. That's it. OK, so I, I can literally add more of those and just drag them on and make it denser. But obviously, as you get closer, they will collide or they will begin to go through each other. So you do need to be careful with that. Actually, just to swap that over now for the um, uh, uh, for the eyeballs so you can see it. Yeah, I mean, you, you're going to have to up that quite a bit, I suppose, before they clash. I bet I've got a few there, but let's have a look. Actually, that's pretty good. Um, and there's a, just another question as well. Um, and is the path can that be tweaked so the path that you've drawn for the tendril can you then sort of slightly adjust and shift aspects of it uh yeah so we talk we 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 have we have talked about that i can't remember the answer we were prepared to give earlier on juice but what <laughs> were we saying what well, we that know is, we know we want to do it right we know so, we want to do it yes yeah yeah so we have we 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 yeah that's all we can say at this stage. We, <laughs> but, but I suppose you know, as we started playing with it, we immediately started thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could do X, Y, and Z? Because obviously that would give us the ability to, you know, do creature effects uh, um, around objects and things. So we we fully understand that that is uh, something people are going to want, and we are going to work on that as well. Um, again, hopefully that will we might be able to get that into 2024 summer release, but if not, it, it will come uh, as a version two. But we we it's absolutely on the list. Bear in mind, I think we started uh, we only saw this two days ago, and we we you know to start actually playing with, and we've literally worked out what we're doing over the last two days. So, so like we've just added the the adding of you know a fractal pattern to give like a a wind effect um it, it it's you know all of this stuff we're kind of working on as we go okay so as we see something there we want to add or alter uh, we we are suggesting and and uh, persuading and again we're beating people uh, if we have to uh, to get those things added but uh, we will try to do that but can you see how effective that is how quickly 
you know, on, on a dense piece of foliage. And remember, most of that stuff, if people are putting it onto geometry, will be further, you know, won't be, you know, we won't be getting mega close to it. So adding a, a fractal pattern will basically give the effect you want of movement on those sort of things. So um, it will work, you know, perfectly. Um, okay, anything else anybody want to see? It just, I'm, I am quite willing to load up the... Um, uh, what what was it I did earlier on? I did the um, actually. If, 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 do you want me oh, to show well. juice? Sorry, bud. The well, you mean from uh, yeah, Polyhaven? Yeah. Do you want me to show the Polyhaven well again, or well, just show some octane stuff? Actually, the the fog and stuff, because we've shown the well recently, whereas yeah. we haven't shown the octane stuff for a long time, and we're already yep. over time. Okay, yeah. so let, let's let's. Uh, Let's uh, let's do that. So let me load. In fact, let me clear the scene first of all. And the the entry on the website is adapting classic textures to modern shading techniques. Yeah, that's that's the next the last tutorial for the day, and it's a big one. I think it's thirty or forty minutes or something. Oh, um, it's up, it's up on YouTube. Okay, right. It, it, it will be in once Andy's finished this. I'll, I'll apply it. So then there is one more tutorial for you guys to go and see for the finish for the day, and it's the the yes. last big one. I'll just quickly show this in the fog and and uh, hopefully that's it guys will that be enough that sounds so, good andy sounds good okay. so we we basically got two objects here uh you know i've got like a rippling you know poly and i've got uh, a, an object here which is just a, a little statue no i haven't got a cold so i've got uh, uh i've got that up so let's go um to the surfacing oh actually i'll tell you what i need to do first oh, i'm tired right okay so we've got basically the new kernel here which is for um uh, uh you know for the photon shading so I i'm not going to go into detail you can go back and see what's in there a little later on um but we've also got here oh actually we don't need that for this one um that that one is going to give us the core sticks we just need to basically turn it on by an object by object basis but effectively all the controls for controlling that and the amount of effect that has is in here okay i'm just going to up uh, the samples a little bit just so that as it resolves you can see it better uh, as we do it okay so that's that so on the let's go on to this one so okay we've got a we've got uh, the standard shader there actually let me show you that with the ipr and shrink this back a little bit over here so there's our there's our statue i'm going to swap that over for a specular material and actually i'm going to turn off the core sticks on that and just swap that over so now we've got a glass object and you can immediately see obviously that's uh, uh refracting but that's about it so if i turn on the core sticks actually i'll turn that on and off just to show you how fast that's updating you've immediately got core sticks uh, added and and it's going to add a bit of noise to the geometry here but i also can um add in um sort of dispersion so you'll start getting the rainbow effects through that as well and again all of that sort of updates as you drag it will basically uh, update in seconds in no time these little errors here are on the core render engine issues now there's two things about that one that's not something which we've got wrong. It's something that Otoy are, are going to be fixing. Um, but when you actually render it with anti-aliasing, it does reduce that. And depending on the scene, sometimes it's not noticeable at all. Sometimes it is, but it is. They know there's a problem. They're working on that. And and obviously, if you're just using basic caustics, it won't really affect you in the same way. These will actually anti-alias out. OK, so that's the first bit. So let's now go over here to the next surface and um, the water surface. Do the same thing again. There's the surface we've got currently. Let's just move that down so we can see it. And again, I'm going to take off the core sticks. Just add that in. Um, so um, oh, was that the blur? What have I done? There, oh, wait, let's turn on the core sticks. There we go. So there's our core sticks added in. And actually, I've already got the dispersion on, but you can see what that looks like without the dispersion. And also, we can up the roughness of that if we want. And that really is better for getting depth. So if you want it to look like it's, you know, deep sea or deep or deeper waters, 
core sticks, that's what they look like. And if you want it to be very shallow, obviously you make it sharper and sharper right up to the, you know, sort of nothing. OK, so um, let's leave that at 2%. That looks pretty good. And then on the dispersion, we can add that. And then you've got the rainbow effects on the uh, caustics as, uh, as well. And again, that updates super fast. So as we you know, drag through that, it will actually update on there really well. Obviously, the dispersion slows that down. So if I turn that off, you can see that actually that updating pretty fast, although it's probably not updating as fast at your end, but you know, it's, it's really effective. So that that's um, one of the things we've just added in. That's going to be obviously in 2024. So I just quickly show the fog and then then I'm I'm done. So let's uh, let's find uh, the base fog scene. OK, cool. So let's have a go. So let's get the IPR up. Uh, by the way, this is a big old mesh, so that's why it's taking a while to to come up. So, OK, so what we've got here is we've got a, a great big scene, you know, whereby we're going through this uh, channel of water. Uh, and obviously, th thanks so much for Sean for putting this together. Uh, it, again, Sean put this together yesterday so we could show the fog uh, uh, on a fairly detailed scene. So it's a, a brilliant that he's sort of done that. So um, if we open up our editor, there's our fog uh, there. So all we actually need to do for that is, oh God, I can't, I can't remember where I put, put that in. You know, I'm so tired. I think it goes into the post effect. Oh yeah, it does. Thank God I got that right. There we go. Okay, so basically um, here's the interface for it here. And um, we just, we can just turn on the fog instantly sort of available. The light beams is gonna be, a, be available as soon as we've added the new lights which we're which we're literally fixing now so they'll be available for 2024 as well and that will mean that the light will stream through the actual branches of the trees and and you'll have that happening again uh, fairly instantaneously so a couple of things we've got here which are, are just worth bearing in mind so i'm gonna first we'll just change that to white so we've got here the fog uh, environment contribution. So if I turn that um, to zero, you can see that's basically um, uh, no contribution of the light itself and the color of the light. If I up that, you can see you can get a substantial amount of effect and influence from the light uh, and from the environment. So, you know, here we've got sort of a lot of blue sky. You can have that affect the fog or not affect the fog as much as you uh, want. Uh, likewise, so let me just get that back to a more mild, a little bit of fog color. So you can obviously blend between that and have um, a lot of uh, um, the uh, base fog color or mix that in with the sky color so you get a bit of both affecting the scene. You can see up here more of the blue light is coming through and less of the blue light lower. So it really, really works really well and, and obviously affects the scene uh, brilliantly. We also can have the fog extinction, extinction rates. Let me just drag that down. You can see we can pull the fog really close to camera or drag it back. And then there's the actual distance of the of the fog itself. And you'll see this um, uh, draw out as we get down here past 25. Yeah, there we go. You can see that actually probably I'm a bit high on the fog extinction, but uh, let's take that back a little bit. Yeah, there, there you can see, hopefully you can see that. That's the fog. Uh, the maximum distance sort of drawing in the background. So we've got that set to 250 meters, so it covers uh, the distant mountains as well. And obviously we can change that extinction uh, uh, rate uh, so we can still see a bit of them in the background if we want to, all right? So as we go through the scene, you can see how that's influencing the scene so on the shorter bits of the distance, so when you're close in here, the fog is considerably less. Um, and uh, obviously it's more on the distant bits um, you can see there. So a couple of other quick things. The fog base level 
is the height of the fog from the scene. So if you're on a mountainous scene and you, you've got a shot higher up the scene, you can raise that fog level to start where you're doing your effect from. It doesn't just have to be at zero. You can raise that up. Um, and, but one last thing I just want to point out on here, and I think that's on um, our kernel. Let's have a look. I, I can't quite remember that. Um, Oh, yeah, 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 here we go. So we have also on the post processing part, there is now a lens flare option that's again brand new. And that basically um, uh, uh, you know, gives us the ability to sort of, um, you know, we can um, oh, let's have a look here. We, we, we basically can add, um, oh God, I'm so tired, but we can add the intensity of those uh, uh, bits. We can basically up and lower those. We also can do uh, chromatic aberration intensity and again can you see the effects of that yep so as i drag that out i mean obviously that's incredibly exaggerated <laughs> but if you're trying to get a, a massive speed effect of going through as you uh wrap through your scene you can obviously uh, uh up that oh. sort of um uh, aberration intensity to give you that sense of speed and everything as you're whizzing through your scene so again all of that has been added uh, um, in the in 2024 into Andy. the octane parts of the Andy, yes, sir. sorry to interrupt, but could you start again from the very beginning of today? Okay. Because Yoshi San is here. <gasps> Yoshi San <laughs> has missed this. Um, <laughs> okay, so so let's Don't start again. You. It's uh, <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning. How Everyone are you all? So, 10 hours. Uh, so, um, so uh, obviously we're, we're you, know, you you can see how that's working. The fogging's real time. Um, obviously, you know, really easy to add. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think unless any of you want to see some of the new features, I think we've added uh, uh, I masses. Think that's, that's all for today, Andy. Thank, thank God. So, uh, so uh, uh, just for Yoshi. Uh, um, obviously, for Yoshi, uh, all the videos are available, so you can go back and look at the stuff um, uh, that we've been doing throughout the day. Shit, uh, No, just before we go, uh, I will post the answers to the quiz on the website. Um, and as I said, all the recordings that we've done throughout the day, so the demos that Juice and Andy have done, they will eventually just be edited and topped and tailed with the with the lightwave logos and put onto youtube channel that will come over the next few days and obviously all the interviews the tutorials um are all up on the youtube channel now for you to watch plus there's a new tutorial going out now from cap who did a fantastic piece um i said it's about 40 minutes long so feel free to watch that if you have not been up for the last 10 hours like we have and ready yeah. to crash <laughs> and burn <laughs> uh, and so so thank you everyone for joining as well. It's it's been you've been a an amazing crowd of coming back for every single session. It's been really really super, and it's been great fun to do. Uh, yeah. I have to say it's been fantastic. Um, somebody earlier on said that we got to ninety four in this session. No, no, that, that you you misread that. Uh, <laughs> he commented on that ninety four. Oh, for when the, the light wave release. Okay, he right. must ah. have answered. Uh, oh, yeah, 1994 yeah. for the for the release. 94 was when it released standalone. 90 was when it released as a part of the toaster. Exactly. So either would be valid. And again, just a, a quick recommendation before we go. Uh, remember, um, obviously the the you know the upgrade is discounted until we uh, are launching the upgrade. So it'd be very worth getting your upgrades in early. Uh, but we've also given an extra ten percent away uh, just for the weekend. Uh, so if anybody wants to get a little bit extra off, it's well worth doing. Um, it, it, again, the twenty twenty four update is extensive, and and uh, hopefully you you know we've we've shown you some good stuff. Obviously, we're going to be. Uh, showing more on the render engine uh, updates as we go on and, and obviously more of the plugins as we uh, further develop them. But I think you'll agree. I mean, even on the alpha stuff we've shown today with Tendril or Steve, as we like to call it, and uh, uh, obviously the, the new GNOs Thicken and, and Lathe and um, and obviously the weight brush is amazing. Uh, all of those things uh, just give you really a flavor of how good this um 2024 update is going to be and uh, uh we hope obviously 
I know some of you will have missed some of those demos, so just re remember they are all going to be posted so you can see them. And uh, for those guys who've been with us all day, outstanding. And uh, yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and uh, um, we hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, uh, obviously, you know, I, I mean, uh, yeah, well, we've obviously loved showing you some of this stuff today. So. And I've just posted again the link to the YouTube video for everyone who thinks, who believes the press that says things were all done practical, all done in camera. This series of four videos, which are fantastic, show you that that's not true. There's lightwave work included in amongst the four videos that is that are shown. So definitely go watch those those videos. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and actually, I, I think I mentioned earlier on, it has absolutely blown us away this year how many things that are currently on TV, uh, on major channels, and uh, uh, films that are you know uh, uh, recently been finished. Stacks of stuff is uh, is being produced in Lightwave every day, and and uh, and there, there are certain ones we can't talk about now, but I know we're going to be talking about towards the end of the year uh, when we're allowed to sort of talk about them. Um, but there uh, and there's a couple of things we we won't be able to mention because in theory they were only ever done practically but we absolutely know they won't so there, there's it, it, again if you can get the word out and obviously uh, let people know what we're doing and uh, um and hopefully uh yeah i think that's that's us done i think so it Cheers. might be worth uh, someone pointing yoshi to um the videos as well and make sure uh because i know obviously in japan he's probably only just got up and and uh has missed yeah, a lot of it so it's uh, almost it's almost yeah. 5 a.m in tokyo so yeah oh, so my it, word. Will, it will yeah. all be on youtube soon nothing will be missed so it's all it's all going to be available yeah.